And we are going to start with our final section, which is a demo presentation and walkthrough of blockchain.ey.com. So people have seen snippets of all the different products uh, uh, during the baseline presentation and earlier in the week. Uh, what we're going to go to is a full step-by-step. -step. So we're going to look at the smart contract review. This is uh, our first product that was publicly available and it's just leaving beta now. Uh, we're also going to cover uh, the uh, visualization tool that we've developed. And I think we're showing just the visualization for Bitcoin, but we're going to have visualization for Ethereum uh, very shortly thereafter. Uh, and we'll also be showing our new tax tool, which is something I didn't, we didn't really get a chance to show to. We had the, in order to consolidate our summit down, we used, the original summit had like three tracks of eight sessions. It was too many for what we were doing live. So we didn't get a chance to do a deep dive into tax. Uh, and fortunately, all of us had our tax day postponed, at least in the US. But we will be covering tax as well uh, in, in that uh, uh, closing session. Uh, and uh, with that, I want to introduce uh, our very final session of the summit, my colleague Isabella, who is going to give us an amazing demo walkthrough. So uh, Isabella, are you ready to take it away? All set, Paul. Thank you. Let Fantastic. Me... All yours. Thank you. So thank you, Paul. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Isabella, and I'm the product owner of EY Global's um, blockchain software as a service platform. Today, I'll be presenting with uh, the product owners of our initial service offerings, um, Joe, Omer, and John, to show you a glimpse into what the future of blockchain looks like at UI. We have a lot of exciting things to show you today. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them and we'll try to answer them at the end if time permits. Otherwise, we'll make sure to follow up with you. So on our agenda today, we'll be walking you through a vision and show you uh, what it really means for our products and our end users when we say blockchain.com, it's gonna be our SaaS application. Then we'll be presenting and showing a live demo of three of our main applications. The first one would be the EY Smart Contract and Token Review, which some of you may already know, it's currently available and free on blockchain.com. So if you haven't had a chance yet during these days of the summit, make sure you go to blockchain.com and create your account. You'll be able to test and take a first look um, of, of this initial solution. Next, we'll be showing you EUI Blockchain Analyzer and Tax Calculator um, and Block Explorer. These two applications will go live later this year on the platform and will be available to you. And at the end, we'll go through our future plans and what's coming next for the entire platform. So our vision for blockchain.com from the beginning is to be a true software as a service platform. Our goal is to integrate all of UI's global blockchain software, softwares under the same account for you or end user and make sure it's available under the same URL in a single unified experience. Right now, we are only supporting individual accounts, but we are working on enterprise accounts as well. So if you're excited and interested and you cannot wait, please reach out to us directly. Currently, our application is free, as Paul has mentioned, but as we add new functionalities and new products, we will be start charging our users. And we'll be doing that through our subscription model, in which our users will be able to subscribe to one or multiple services in the platform, upgrade for those services as needed, and pay through the platform. And every new feature and update we work on will be instantly released and available to all our end users. And one of the things that really brings value to our products is that we constantly at UI work with professionals across multiple industries and areas, such as cybersecurity, tax, forensics, supply chain, as you may see through the, some of these products that we'll be demoing today, to ensure that our applications really bring a value to our end users. And to show that to you, I'll pass it to Omer, who will be showing the first application that we have available now on blockchain.com. So Omer, the floor is yours. Thank you, Isabella. Um, hope that you can see my video and hear me well. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Greisman. I'm the product owner of the Smart Contact and Token Review Tool, and I lead uh, the blockchain security team that is based in Tel Aviv. Uh, just before I start, uh, a quick, uh, excuse me, guys. Yeah, just before I start, that was a security measure. Now you probably can see me. 
So just before I start, uh, just a quick shout out to the team in Tel Aviv, Amin Adav, Yusuf, Jonathan, and Avner that supports us, uh, supports us on the business side. Thank you for the, for the amazing job you guys are doing. Uh, this is all thanks to you. I know that we're supposed to be in New York now, but the corona had different plans for us. Anyway, uh, thank you for anyone that is jo joining is, and is watching at the moment. Uh, I'm very excited about this opportunity to uh, introduce you to the Smart Contract Review Tool that, uh, as was mentioned, is currently available for free in the blockchain ey.com. Just subscribe and use the tool uh, 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 as you wish. Uh, I will also take, uh, give you a, a quick glimpse of what we have planned uh, uh, to our next releases. Uh, things are under development, but I feel it's very important for you to say what is, uh, what is our testing studio is all about. Um, um, the short history of, 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 of security related incidents in, in the space of, of smart contact and, and blockchain is unfortunately quite rich. Uh, we all know about uh, the DAO attack uh, that was back in 2016. Uh, since then, there are, well, unfortunately, plenty of incidents like the parity, two, the, the two parity wallet hacks. And recently, we learned about different economical attacks in the uh, DeFi space. And um, our team has been uh, involved, in the, in, involved in the space for a while, and we'd, we'd like to leverage our hands-on or more classical experience with code, uh, with code the review and security to create a tool that actually makes our life easier as security auditors, but eventually the tool is extensible, sorry, uh, 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 and, and automated and user-friendly as possible. Um, the mutability of the blockchain and the fact that the smart contracts, the code of the smart contract is open for everybody are probably two of the major features and important features of the blockchain technology. But from a security standpoint, these might be major risks. And we need to understand one thing. People won't be using smart contracts unless they feel that those smart contracts are safe. And um, the, and this is why this is our mission to create or, or to increase confidence while uh, to, to increase confidence in smart contract based applications and assets. And um, the tool supplies you uh, with a rich uh, interface and quite detailed information about all the tests and testing scenarios that we are running on the smart contract that you're applying to the tool. And uh, this uh, hopefully will increase the trust between different uh, counterparties, reduce those risks we are talking about, and create better transparency for you and, and for enterprise in general, better understand what's really going on and what the smart contract actually does. Um, the tool focuses on security, but not only security. The alignment of the business logic is really important. Uh, whether uh, it's actually making sure that the, two, the smart contract does what it's supposed to do. And um, it's, whether it's a, a customized functionality or, it's, or is it based on a known standard like the ERC-20 uh, token standard that we are supporting at the moment. And uh, we're using different methods of, of static and dynamic analysis, and we are uh, basically creating different simula simulation of, of, of edge cases, of uh, testing edge cases and different scenarios to make sure that uh, uh, the smart contract behave as expected. So um, um, I will stop uh, talking now. No, actually, keep talking, but I'll do that while I am demoing the tool. So again, feel free to go to blockchainey.com and sign up for free and use the tool. Um, the tool is quite uh, basic to use. Um, no need, no installation, no, no setup, uh, no need to connect to any external application. Just, just drop in your code over here, create, click the scan button, and you will be prompt to the results. Uh, this uh, option to, um, um, excuse me, This, uh, this option to, uh, um, um, to run the code um, is good for the cases. Uh, uh, this, this option of basically editing the code in the source, of, uh, source code editor over here is good for the cases when the code wasn't deployed to the, uh, to the mainnet yet. You can either drop the code here or upload the Solidity file 
uh, and, and, and then you can actually uh, uh, take, take advantage of the main, 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 uh, main reason behind the tool to uh, validate your contract before they are being deployed to the mainnet. Um, other possibilities are to, uh, to review contracts that are already deployed to the mainnet. We have a list here of 50 uh, quite popular ERC20 tokens. I will choose one of them for the demo purpose. And you can also uh, 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 supply to the tool a, a mainnet address uh, of, uh, of any smart contract. And uh, we are using uh, the Ether, uh, Etherscan uh, API to fetch the uh, source code of a smart contract. As you can see, the Solidity version of the, of the code was already extracted. We have here a unique case that the Solidity version that's used for uh, deployment is actually different from the one stated in the code. So let me just click scan. The, uh, the system uh, compiles the code and runs the, and runs the, the different uh, tests to create this uh, very detailed report. So over now, uh, at the moment, in the, uh, on the free version, uh, there's a little bit mo more than 100 uh, different tests in, that is divided for a few different, uh, into a few different categories. Uh, for example, I was talking about functionality and business logic testing. Um, these are different tests that are making sure that the uh, ERC-20 standard is, uh, is uh, implemented correctly and the business logic works as intended. For each one of the tests, uh, you, you will receive a binary result that either uh, fail or, 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 pa or fail or pass. And for those tests that maybe won't be relevant to the uh, smart contracting scope, you will receive this uh, NA or an informative uh, 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 result. Each one of the tests uh, has detailed information about the purpose of the test, how is it implemented, and a high-level recommendation of, of what you should do to, in order to mitigate the risk. And we supply uh, two code snippets that will help you better understand uh, uh, why the code is failing or uh, why the code is failing or passing. So this specific test uh, makes sure uh, that one of the definitions of the events of the ERC20 standard are, are correctly defined in the code. Other tests over here are actually the ones that are simulated the different edge cases and scenarios in the smart contract. For example, let me take uh, this one upon sending funds, the send sender's balance is updated correctly, making sure that the most basic functionality of the transfer function of the ERC-20 works as, as intended. We want to make sure that the balance are updated when the, uh, the tr transfer is completed correctly. So this is the functionality testing with ERC-20 ERC uh, support. The overview section gives you some general information about the token and, and in uh, smart contracts in general. For, for example, the number of external function uh, give you some information about the size of the smart contract. And, and from a security standpoint, this is quite important because those external function are basically the uh, attack surface of the smart contract. And these are the, uh, the function that we would like to spend the most time uh, auditing, testing, and validating. Um, the security section will probably, for most of us, will be the most important one. We have a variety of tests over here. And recently, we wanted to make sure that our tests uh, are mapped to the SWC registry. Uh, each one of those tests uh, uh, can give you a badge with the relevant item on the, on, in the SWC registry, which is a repository of vulnerabilities and weaknesses in smart contracts that is, uh, uh, is open and, and maintained by our, our friends in consensus. And it really, it's really uh, gives us an opportunity to create a common language uh, for this maturing uh, uh, um, uh, world of, of security of smart contracts. Uh, in addition, we run tests that are not part of the SWC. One of them uh, that this instance that we are testing at the moment is failing is making sure that state changes uh, are, are uh, um, uh, including a mission of an event. The state of the smart contract is, uh, is, an, is a concept, but, but actually it's basically a snapshot of the more sensitive areas of the smart contract. And every time there's an update or a change in the, in the state of the smart contract, you would like to create event that actually alerts uh, um, external, function, external uh, applications or maybe the uh, owner of the smart contract that something that is important or sensitive has happened. So 
Here we can get, see exactly the code snippet in the, the, the smart contract we are testing. In, the, in this uh, token, the, uh, this, um, uh, uh, the allowance, for the, the update of the allowance uh, is, not, uh, is not accompanied by an emission and event. And you can go to the, actually to the code editor itself to fix that line, rescan the code and to make sure this, this risk is mitigated. The quality section and the efficiency section are two, uh, 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 two concepts that uh, we give some basic information in the free version. Uh, we're testing about uniqueness of name, documentation, and others, other concepts that will give you better information about the quality of the code. So that was a really fast review of the different um, predefined tests that we have as part of, of the automated testing that our uh, solution uh, uh, gives you as a user or as an enterprise. But basically, the amount of or, or the possi possibilities are endless. And we, we believe that uh, we can uh, uh, actually develop all the different options that are there to review in, term, in terms of functionality of smart contracts. And, and uh, don't believe everything they say about formal verification. So uh, the wise thing to do is to create your own test. And, for, and, and this is why we have created the testing studio, which is still under development. But I feel that it's really important to give you just a glimpse of how it works. And there, basically, there are two, um, two reasons to do that. If you want to get uh, better information about one of those uh, predefined tests, for example, I will talk about the allowance spending is possible. This is a test that makes sure that the allowance mechanism of, of the ERC-20, uh, it works well. So let me send that to the testing studio. This is still under development, but uh, uh, the basic concept works quite, uh, quite well. So what we see here that it's a breakdown of, 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 the, uh, of, the, uh, of the test into its different steps. So we developed here uh, a test that is, is, is comprised of four different, uh, four different steps. The first step is deployment of a smart contract with its parameters. Uh, next, the next step is the execution of the unfreeze function. It's something that, uh, 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 it's something that we do as an optional step. Next step is creating the, uh, the approve, is actually calling the approve function to make to create the situation that the number one address over here created a, an, an allowance that allows the spender that here represented as number two uh, to actually spend on, on this behalf uh, an, an amount of 20 tokens. And the fourth uh, step is to execute the transfer function that actually does this uh, transfer or on behalf of the number one uh, of the one uh, address. So obviously this test, as we have seen before, for the smart contract we are testing at the moment, needs to pass. But I'm showing you because here it's a situation where you can better understand how we build the code, the predefined test. But uh, what I would like to do here, because I'm just being conscious of time, I wouldn't, want, wouldn't like to create uh, a new test from scratch. I'm just would like to modify this uh, test uh, for my needs. And I would like to test this option of, this is something that we encountered in the past that the testing, uh, actually the, um, the allowance mechanism allows uh, uh, to bypass the, uh, the freeze option of a token. Uh, uh, let, 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 me, let me show you what I'm actually going to change here in this test and, and it will make more sense. But I'm keeping this uh, initial supply of 100 tokens for the deployment of this smart contract. I'm changing the unfreeze function into freeze function. Over here, you can see all the external functions of the, of the token that uh, uh, any application a user can call. Uh, I will create a, a, a freeze amount of 50, of 50 tokens, and I would like to change that step into something that is not optional. If there's an error, I would like to actually stop the test. Uh, the next step, we're creating the same concept of approval, but this time I would like to see if I can create an approval of, 50 to of 70 tokens, although there are only 50 tokens that are possible to be, uh, 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 to be used. And eventually I will um, try to use this uh, 70 token and to bypass this, this mechanism of, of freezing 
uh, uh, 50 tokens out of 100. So the test has failed as expected because the last step of transfer form actually uh, didn't work well because the mechanism of, of, of the freeze works well in, in this case. And I feel good about this, uh, uh, about this test and, and it works as expected. One last thing I would like to do is because I'm expecting this uh, last step to fail, I will actually uh, uh, um, make want this step to throw an arrow. And if it does throw an arrow, I can see that as a success of the step and, and a success of the, of the whole uh, test itself. So um, let me run, this, run, run the test again, and the test pa pass, passes well. And you can see that the transaction failed as required. So I can uh, basically um, uh, uh, save this test and use it later. And more than that, the different tests, the different te customized tests that I've created can be shared with my team, uh, uh, with, uh, my with my uh, clients, if, if I'm a, a person that uh, audit and would like to give those, those uh, tests for, for uh, use or review by other, other third parties. And think about this concept of you uh, maybe deploying a smart contract to the mainnet and you would like to give your, uh, your uh, users or anyone that uh, in, interacts with, with the smart contract a way to have better confidence and create trust in your, in your smart contract by supplying a, a list of tests that can verify all the functionality, the security aspects, or, or the business logic does it, that, that is implemented as, in part, as, part of your, uh, as part of your smart contract. Uh, we have lots of things coming up next in the next version, so feel free to go to blockchainey.com, uh, subscribe, and stay tuned. Uh, um, that's it for me, and I uh, send it uh, next to Joe. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Omar. Uh, so, hey everyone, I'm Joe, and uh, I'm the product owner of our blockchain uh, block explorer. Uh, and so, I'm going to walk you through our new block explorer, as well as the data visualization uh, functionalities that Paul mentioned earlier. Uh, so we will start with a quick overview of the you know, Explorer. Uh, I, I won't take the time to explain what a block explorer is uh, too much, but our uh, block explorer is grow, grown out of uh, a need for internally us to be able to access on-chain data more effectively. Um, and in a secure manner uh, without having uh, the need to um, rely on third parties. So, you know, EY, we take our client data and confidentiality very seriously. And, and so we needed to develop an explorer to use um, to, to uh, when supporting audit work and, and other uh, work streams there. So having used many explorers, uh, being that there's a great many out there with a lot of cool uh, features, we wanted to focus on having a user-friendly design user-friendly application that allowed um, users to quickly find what they needed to get their job done with uh, having a full backing of as much data if they wanted to go that route uh, to, yeah, to hide anything back that they needed to to the blockchain. Uh, based on that idea of user-friendly data, we took it a step further and developed some custom visualization features that will allow users to have a new perspective on on-chain data. Um, and then, you know, as with uh, everything that, that has been said today on the summit, we are looking to have uh, a, a robust design for individuals and for businesses uh, collaborative across all of our EY uh, blockchain platforms and solutions. I'm going to quickly take a look at some of these high level functionalities before we go into uh, a demo of the tool itself. And uh, the, the <clears throat> excuse me, so at a high level, we're looking at a block explorer uh, with a simple functionality where users are able to input an address, a transaction or a block and have the uh, information returned to them. Uh, layered on top of that is our data visualization layer to provide easy to interpret visuals to enable users to identify uh, and highlight patterns and trends either within their own data uh, or within enterprise data, um, looking really to help enterprises explore the relationships that they have with on-chain data, as well as for individuals to make it easier to understand security best practices like minimizing address reuse. Uh, and then finally, we're very focused on open and shareable data and our Explorer is built from the ground up to share with you the underlying data uh, to enable you know, better decision making and also make sure that you're always tying back on chain. So with that, we're gonna switch over to uh, 
demonstration of the tool. Excuse me. So in the future, uh, when you log into blockchain.ey.com, you're going to be directed to this page here uh, once you select our Explorer tool. And this is our homepage. Uh, so you'll land here and you'll be able to see a place to input a transaction address or block that you'd like to look and learn a little bit more about. You'll also be presented with some information uh, currently uh, going on in the network, you know, quick statistics about minimum transaction fees, the, number, the current block height, the size of the blockchain, uh, and then we'll also present you with some of the recent block data. Uh, and as you can see here, this is currently Bitcoin focused, as Paul mentioned. We're quickly looking to get Ethereum and ERC-20s and a couple of other uh, assets uh, on board with this. Uh, we can look here with the recent blocks, quick high level view, what height is it, what time in UTC, number of transactions in that block, size and weight. Um, but I think we can show a little bit more about that block, you know, going to the block page here. What we see on the block page uh, is it's divided into two major sections, the block summary and then the transaction listing with a small navigation feature in between to help users navigate between blocks more effectively. In the summary, we see information uh, that you're, you might be interested in about the block, including its hash, when it was confirmed, the num number of confirm confirmations, which means the number of blocks ahead of it, uh, the total number of transactions within the block, the total amount of Bitcoin moved in this block and the amount of fees associated with that, as well as some other information you see here. Within the transaction listing of the block itself, we'll, we'll show you the number displayed out of the total. Uh, you can see here that we lay out these transactions in distinct objects uh, with a hyperlink to the transaction page, the ability to look at an input or an output um, address uh, by hyperlinking to that page. And of course we show each of these in a higher level detail than some people might be used to, but we offer the ability for users to dive down deep into uh, the information that's on chain here via the expandable transaction objects. Of course, also being that we want to make sure all users uh, get access to all of the data are presenting a, a JSON response akin to the Bitcoin core response, uh, showing all of the information in its raw form. Uh, it's easily, easy to share and, and easy to use in other applications. Um, so we can click through to uh, any of these hyperlinks, get taken to a block, uh, excuse me, get taken to an address or a transaction. So we'll go take a quick look at one of these, uh, some of these transactions here. Uh, what you see on screen is our address page. Um, again, split into two things, the address summary and the transaction listing. Uh, in this case, address summary is going to give you some specific information about this address and its history. So it has a current unspent balance of zero. Uh, it's participated in two transactions where it, it sent uh, 0.005 Bitcoin in one transaction uh, and it received the same in another. And we also list the address type here as Bitcoin addresses can, can come in different flavors. You'll see the transaction listing here is a, pretty, is a little bit more bare bones than our block, pa uh, block page. And that's because we're working on refining this uh, and iterating it into something a little more user friendly with a, uh, a balance feature that will show a balance at a point in time rather than just current balance. Um, but through here, users are able to click into different transaction pages. And with that, we're going to go take a look at a transaction that might be familiar to some of you. Uh, Arwen referenced this earlier uh, today. This is the Bitcoin pizza transaction, the most expensive Papa John's uh, that's out there. Um, so back in 2010, a user spent 10,000 Bitcoins to get access to two boxes of pizza. Um, and here again, you see that the transaction page is broken out into two things, transaction summary and uh, a transaction listing. The transaction summary shows high level information about the transaction, the hash height, um, as well as the block hash that this was confirmed in, the number of confirmations uh, and the like. Similarly to the block page, we have what we're calling our transaction object here, where the user can see at a quick high level, what are the inputs, what are the outputs, how many inputs and outputs. Uh, we've paginated this just to save the user from having to scroll 100 uh, feet to get to the information that they want. And again, each of these objects is individually expandable or expandable as a whole. Um, and similarly to the blog page, we provide a JSON response here uh, in a commonly acceptable format for Bitcoin transactions. So that again, you are always able to tie it back to the on-chain transaction. 
And that's all well and good. And, and this is a tool that's useful for our audit practitioners as well as um, you know, other practitioners here. But what's really interesting and what I'm excited to show you is our uh, data visualization capability. So here's that same Bitcoin pizza transaction um, in our visualizer software. As we can see, this initially looks pretty hectic, but uh, we've broken this out into uh, some easy to see and easy to understand uh, components here with our, the blue circle in the center representing the transaction, the data associated with that, and the green squares are going to represent uh, the individual UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs being spent in the red or being created in that single output in the green there. So if we click here on our transaction detail, we see some high level information about the transaction. This is the, pay, uh, the transaction we were looking at before, when it was confirmed and what block height, the total output, how many fees were associated with it. And we can see here the number of inputs and the number of outputs as well. If we expand this further, we can also see the total number of inputs uh, as well as each individual input and the link to their address page, uh, the ability to copy those. And then if you look closely, you can see uh, some of the squares highlight as we mouse through them just to make it a little bit easier to pick it out of a, you know, a massive transaction like this. Uh, conversely, on the output side, we can also see um, the output shown here. And we're always able to go back to that transaction page that we were just on to get all the details in a single view. Now, what's the benefit of this versus looking at this transaction in the textual view that we were just looking at? Well, here, if we wanted to explore, we don't have to open new tabs or lose the tab that we're on to understand how this transaction fits into a broader web of transactions. We're able to do it all right here. And so if we select this output, we can see some information about it. It was sent to this address, which controls it. It was this much uh, Bitcoin. It was created in the transaction that we originally looked at, and it was spent in a subsequent transaction. So let's look at, at that subsequent transaction and understand a little bit more about that. So we expand the node and we can see here the transaction output coming from this transaction and then being consumed or spent in this transaction here. And if we open that, we can see that that transaction resulted in two outputs uh, being sent to two separate addresses. And from there, of course, we can expand this all the way out uh, if we wanted to and if we had the time, we could expand it to the current block height, but we can stop there for now. Uh, and, and we can look at the other branch of this transaction and we can see that these outputs were eventually recombined here uh, into one single, another single output, which is then spent subsequently from there. Uh, similarly, we're able to go backwards and expand uh, previous transactions. And if we wanted to go all the way back to the Genesis block here to see that. Uh, what's really fun about this uh, is this can get really busy really quickly. Um, you know, the more you click through, the more nodes that you open. Um, but we always wanted to make sure that it's easy to, to orient yourself within it. And so we've added some features to allow for that, uh, including highlighting by hovering so that you always can pick out what you want to click before you click it and then risk expanding a large node. You're also able to quickly focus in on specific transactions or zoom back out and get a global orientation on the original transaction that you clicked on. Uh, finally, we have an export feature which currently allows users to uh, share a JPEG with others uh, in the future and, and in, in line with our uh, objectives to provide good clean data. We'll also be able to ex export some of the underlying data here that you can share either within uh, for, for EY users within uh, work files or for enterprise users uh, for other purposes. So with that, that, that's all the demo we've got today. I'm going to turn you over to John who will talk about uh, some of the cool stuff we have going on for the tax calculator. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Jean Pham, and I am the product owner for the Blockchain Analyzer Tax Calculator. Uh, and so let me go ahead and start sharing with you guys what the tool does itself. Uh, so the tax calculator was created internally in order to calculate the capital gains that might arise from trading and investing in cryptocurrencies, as well as spit out a form 8949, which users can then use uh, and import into their US-based tax return. Uh, and so there are a couple key fundamental things that enable us to do this. Uh, the first of which is our import transactions page, uh, which essentially allows us to download and retrieve CSV files for our EY internal users. Uh, from their clients, uh, and we currently support around 10 to 12 exchanges or so, 
which are the most popular exchanges that we've seen from our EY users internally. Uh, so we do eventually want to branch out from that and not only do CSVs, but also increase the capability for API connections. And so eventually we'll be creating it so that if you have a read-only uh, access key for us, you can go ahead and upload that and use that in order to bring in your transaction data so that there's no potential data manipulation at all between the CSV files. Uh, and so the next thing we wanna talk about is the historical data file. So when you're trading crypto to fiat, it's a lot easier in order to do that because you already have a counter base uh, or a counter type of currency that the IRS recognizes, which is in this case, US dollar. Uh, but when it comes to crypto to crypto transactions, it's a little bit more difficult because of the fact that the price in USD for that cryptocurrency necessarily isn't always readily available. And so what we do is we pull information from a third party provider uh, that aggregates the data. And that's what we use in order to reference our proceeds and costs for our sales and our purchases. Um, and then the tool again, downloads the form 8949, which can be used for taxpayers in order to attach to their US tax returns. Uh, this can be downloaded in either a PDF format or a CSV format in case you wanna double check the work that our tool does, or if you wanna you know, manipulate it a little bit some more afterwards. Uh, and another great thing I think about our tool being on the blockchain.ey.com server is that it provides you easy access to speak with somebody who's a tax professional within UI. Um, and this is important, especially now because of the increased scrutiny that the IRS has been pushing onto tax compliance. Um, so many of you know may know about the John Doe summons from uh, the IRS for anyone who traded largest amounts from Coinbase. Uh, and it's basically telling you, you know, if you haven't calculated your taxes correctly in the past, please amend it. Uh, please true up your numbers uh, so that going forward, you can be accurate and compliant. Um, and the other thing is that they incorporated the Schedule I new question, which is, did you interact with cryptocurrency at all within the past year? Um, and so just with the increased scrutiny with the IRS in terms of being compliant with your cryptocurrency based investments, we think now is more of the time, more important than ever, that you need to be compliant and make sure that you're using the correct tools and speaking to the right people in order to make sure that you're reporting everything that you need to and that everything turns out okay. Um, and so three of the main features that I'm very proud of our team for being able to create is the ability to add cryptocurrency events, change up the accounting methodologies, and also provide a role for report to make tax easier next year. So to start off with, I'll talk about our cryptocurrency events. Um, many of you may be doing things like mining, or you might be receiving hard forks, airdrops. You might be performing staking, lending, or interacting with SAFs and ICOs. Each of these by itself has their own cost basis. And essentially what you need to do is keep track of that because eventually when you sell the cryptocurrency that you earn from this, you're going to need to refer back to it and see really what the cost basis for that future sale would be when you get some sort of proceeds on behalf of it. And so I'm really happy that our tool can do that and it's a built-in functionality so that you can automatically import it in. Um, for accounting methodologies, we do do FIFO and IFO. Uh, the most compliant way and the way we use it for our EY internal users is the FIFO methodology. But for those of you who want a sort of variation of a specific ID in order to decrease your taxable income, we do have the HIFO methodology, which will make it so that your cost basis is higher than, you know, if you were to use FIFO. Uh, and then the other feature that we have is going to be our roll for report, which allows you to download a report with the remaining lots of every cryptocurrency that you've purchased, as well as attach a cost basis and a holding period date from them in the first place. And so this is super useful because this allows you to essentially do taxes much, much easier next year. Say you have like 20 uh, exchange files or wallet reports that you have to push into your, your tax calculator. You don't wanna do that again every single year. So this report makes it so that if you stop doing your taxes at 1231, 2019, and you spit out this report on 1 1 2020, you can instantly just throw it in and it'll have everything that you've imported previously, uh, including the cryptocurrency based events. And so let me go ahead and do now um, share with you the tool that we have. 
so yeah, cool. So we will be on the blockchain.ey.com platform. And so you can start by logging into here and clicking into the tax calculator option. So this first page that you'll see, this is only going to be shown to EY users and enterprise services that we have reached out to us to build on to help. Um, B2C users, public users, they won't see this because the chances are they won't have multiple uh, engagements to work with. So let me just go ahead and jump and show you what a public user will be able to see. And so they'll start off by seeing this imports page that currently has three files in here, Coinbase Pro, BCA te template, and Coinbase. Um, so the BCA template is our own template that we've created in order to incorporate transactions that we currently may not support through different exchanges that we don't have uh, the support for. So this will cover everything else that you might be missing if you don't see the exchanges that you see or want to import in the first place. So in our transactions page, you'll see all of the transactions that you've imported with the three files that were previously shown on the imports page. Um, and the first thing you can do really on this page is download a CSV of all the transactions that you've done. And we recommend this because it's going to be important for you to be able to identify you know, which lots were counteracted against each other so that you can find and keep track of the basis. Uh, so that you know, if something happens in the future and you need a report to go back off of and sort of see all the transactions that might have came up together to give you your capital gains number, you can download this and rerun those transactions, see what it's like and see where you know, there might be something else that you wanna look into. Um, the other thing is the add events button. And so this is one of my favorite features because it enables you to kind of add additional basis into your transactions. So for example, like you can do mining, hard forks, airdrops, ICOs, SAFs, STOs, lending staking, and miscellaneous because with this industry, you never know what's gonna come up next and there's always gonna be something new. Um, but with mining, let me go ahead and create a mining transaction. So I'll go ahead and do, sorry about that, let's type in a Bitcoin transaction, I'll pretend to have mined one, uh, and then I'll go to USD as the counter pair, and I will save the transaction. And so what happens next is you'll see that my transaction count goes up and I can find my event, my mining event here. And this will then be applied with your capital gains page eventually when you wanna calculate your taxes. And so let's jump in here. This is really where all the magic happens. This is where the algorithms take effect and all the calculations are done. Um, and so first thing I wanna show you is our different methodologies. So for example, right now we've got 17,000 as a capital gains taxable income. But if we swap it over to HIFO, which uses the highest cost basis in order to calculate your capital gains, you see that the number drops down to $6,300,000. So that's one way to be a little bit more tax conservative uh, so you don't have to take, pay as much um, and it uses the highest cost basis. I'm gonna go back to FIFO for the rest of the presentation just because it provides a little bit more functionality, but you can go through the different years. So in this case, we'll do a 2018 transactions. You can show whether you wanna only see long-term transactions or short-term transactions. If you wanna do a little bit more of an analysis, um, you can drop down the arrows to see the different lots that might've come together for this one sale transaction. And with the denominations of you know, Bitcoin, Ether, all this cryptocurrencies being so far out, it's very useful because then you'll be able to keep track of really any sort of uh, lot that you had before, even if it's extremely high decimal counts. Um, next up, we have our download functions. So you can download a form 8949 in a PDF or a CSV format like we discussed earlier. And you can download the roll forward button in order to make sure that when you start doing your taxes next year, you'll only have the lots that still exist, that still only have your cost basis. And so that way you can make it so that your tax preparation next year is a lot simpler. Um, and so these is, this is the tool that I'm very proud of our team for being able to develop. Um, I see a lot of functionality with it in the future and I see a lot of importance with it because of the additional compliance aspect that's coming up. We do plan on building even more features out in the future uh, to provide more of an analytical view. Um, but if you would like to speak a little bit more about it, uh, you wanna reach out for an enterprise sort of solution, uh, please feel free to reach out. 
we would love to talk more about the tool as well as the feature roadmap that we have for it. Um, but as for now, I'm gonna send it back to Isabella. Uh, thank you all for paying attention to the presentation. Uh, back to you, Isabella. All right, thank you, John. Um, so we show a lot to you today. Um, I hope you enjoy all the demos we have for you. We're not stopping here. Our team will continue to develop new functionalities and new products, which will be made available to you on blockchain.com. So definitely stay tuned, keep checking back, make sure you go and create your account. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us here uh, for this key contact that you see display. Um, and we'll be happy to respond to you. We are running short on time. So unfortunately we don't have time for Q and A, but definitely send your questions and we'll make sure to follow up with you. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining and I hope you enjoy what we had to show you. Paul, back to you. Thank you very much, Isabella. Let me just get my, my headsets not in properly here. Hopefully that'll, that'll fix it. So uh, really we are at the end after three amazing days and I can only really say thank you to everybody who is still tuned in, especially my mom and my kids who tuned in through their uh, every laptop, PC and iPad we had in the house just to kind of boost our numbers. Um, and uh, I want to close out with a couple of thoughts. Number one, uh, you know, our vision here, the plan that we have is driven by this idea that we should be able to integrate all the elements of the business process in the business life cycle. So Ops chain is all about doing things on the blockchain and blockchain analyzer is all about two things number one understanding what you did and what happened to you on the blockchain and number two full regulatory compliance we want to be able to go to clients our vision which we are step by step making the reality is to be able to show enterprises especially that we can execute high value business transactions for you uh, you can have proper business analytics and pretty much we believe you can model almost any business process with a combination of digital tokens uh, and smart contract working together along with analytics and do so in a fully private GDPR and regulatory compliant manner. I uh, will just only uh, close up for everybody by saying, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much to JT Nickel and the Ethereum Finance Forum, to Suraj Janardhanan, Kevin Cradell, who gave me some great uh, audio video advice, Eli Wilson, John Frechette and Mahir and the operations team, Marikit, Lindsay, Kaylin, and Barbara in our branding, marketing, and communications team. Thank you especially as well to Hudson Jameson and Christine Kim, our guest commentators for today, uh, and our presenters. First of all, our guest star from Dell uh, Technology, Stephen Todd. This was such an incredible honor and, and great news that we were able to share today that Dell is both using OpsChain and, and working with us to put OpsChain into Dell Solutions. Jeff Wong, our Global Chief Innovation Officer, Arwen Holmes, Duncan Westland, Chaitanya Khanda, Miranda Wood, Yusef Alhusni, Karthik Salapuram, AJ May, uh, to whom I gave my uh, both a sincere and an insincere compliment, William Kim, Marco Badur, Isabella Faccini, Omar Greisman, Joe Pham, and Joe A. Uh, so thank you all very, very much for tuning in. Have a terrific week. And again, you know, this is my house. This is what I wake up to every day. And I'm sure Lindsay's going to tell me what I am allowed to do with this. Oh, and an extra special thank you to Lynn, Lindsay's sister, who made that amazing t-shirt, uh, which I think we should go into business selling, which says it's 2020, and the only thing that should be out in public is your blockchain. So that's it for Paul Brody. I'm all out of clean t-shirts, so have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.